What's going on, everybody? This is Seaside Rage, and you know, sometimes the little things count for a lot. And I have to say, Astrobot is a perfect example. It's the most fucking fun I've had in a video game in a long time. Long ass time, make it that. Ignore the bitch ass niggas trying to shout Mario clone. Oh, this is a cage game. Bribes. Yeah, fuck all that. No, this game is awesome and it's a great tribute to PlayStation and deserves all the recognition and positive feedback it got all over. I know I'm cursing like a fucking sailor, but I have to say I'm truly motherfucking impressed. And you should definitely drop 60 bucks on this. But without further ado, let's get on with the review so I can show you why it's that game. The game kicks off with Astrobot and his bros exploring space in their PS5 spaceship. Then out of nowhere, this hating ass clown, space bully, Nebulax, knocks them off course, destroying the PS5 and scatter all uh, six of its parts across the universe in five galaxies. And have he has the CPU and all of on all 300 bots have been sent all over the universe as well. So Astrobot must go planet to planet and save his bot pals, restore power to the PS5, and put an end to Nebulax. Although it's not too big on the plot, as you can see, well, the narrative and it's just normal, the gameplay makes up for it. And I gotta tell you, it knows what it's doing. The game is a 3D platformer that is somewhat like Mario in a way. I'm not trying to contradict myself. It sort of is, but it's not a Mario clone. It has things that separate it from that franchise and it does extremely well on its own because of it. Almost each level, you know, requires you to power up, you know, with about 12, with about like some sort of, uh, I guess, power up. It's like 12 of them. You know, you got the monkey climb. Frog Punch, Squid Balloon, Penguin Swim, I fucking hate it, Teddy Symbol, Samurai Roll, The Sponge, Bulldog Dash, Chicken Jumps, Mouse String, Elephant Suck, No Diddy, Slow Mo, Watch, my fave, personal favorite. They're, are really, they're really useful navigating through 80 levels in, throughout the game, and it isn't that long. Oh, it isn't that long, honestly, even though... Yeah, it has 80 levels. The game isn't that long. And I know people are saying, oh, it's just uh, like six hours. Well, it's not really six hours. It's about well, nine to 16. Honestly, if you don't know what you're doing, if you try to complete, it's around 30. But that's another story. Anyway, moving on. But the level design is pretty perfect. Well, it does present sort of a challenge while platforming. It's set up so perfect so that it may be a lot of trial, but there's not too much error. The game does its best to not completely annoy the player. Everything feels fair. The levels not only look good, but they feel fun to run through. Like, uh, well, not like that freaking hoe you're knocking up every Saturday night, but you get what I mean. <laughs> okay, terrible joke. But anyway, like I said, and if, you know, you miss something, you could just head back to that area and just to, you know, get that particular pod or pick that particular item and just leave the planet. Just like that. You know, without having to complete the whole, that whole particular mission or go run through that whole world. No. Now, I know niggas might be saying, oh, 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 this is a hand-holding shit. It's so easy. It's so this, that, and this. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Not everybody wants to finish a whole level because they miss one thing. Give me a fucking break. This feature could actually work well if Activision would get their head out of their asses and get to back to work on Crash Bandicoot. It could work well for Crash Bandicoot. Anyway, moving on. The levels are different and unique and it feels like, you know, feels interesting with things you could do. They're also filled with Astrobots that resemble a lot of PlayStation characters. Furthermore, at the end of the each level you get to play as iconic PlayStation characters and bot form and save characters from those games which I mean which I might add are was pretty dope too you gotta say you know Ape Escape God of War that that God of War level was my favorite Uncharted to Loco Roco they they had so many games they could have replaced that with I did not really like that 
one. Um, say Ghost of Tsushima, Spidey. Um, I don't know if Bloodborne is an actual PlayStation exclusive, but there is other things they could have used. And all, well, and the last one, Horizon Zero. I mean, Horizon, not Horizon Zero Dawn. That's the first game. The only thing I didn't like was the le mainly really didn't like was one of the water levels with the horrible swimming controls and the ones with constant force motion controls. That's why I didn't like Loco, Ro you know, Loco Roto. I did not like that one. All right, now I'm moving on. All right, the combat is pretty simplistic. You punch to get away from enemies. Use your laser-like feet to uh, go over enemies that can't be hit from the you know front or bottom. No ditty again. You also get equipped with power-ups depending on the stage, like I said earlier, what could be helpful, and trust me, they are. However, unless it's a boss fight, you can't die from one swing. But thanks to the checkpoint system, it's all good. You'll be right back in the action in no time. Like you are on like three freaking blue chew pills. <laughs> I mean, all right, let me, let me, yeah, can't help myself. I'm a little drunk. Okay, let me move on. There are six main bosses with, uh, with along with like 15 minute bosses that all present a different method to beat and have their own like whole persona. There's not really like actual clones. Maybe the enemies can be a little clonish, even though there are a lot of them, but they're not reskins of different enemies. I personally love the last boss. I would go into details, but that would indicate a lot of spoilers. The controls are moving on the controls. They're really smooth. It's easy to navigate around, you know. I mean, navigate around, figure out what's going on and everything. And it really matches up with the Deuce Kent's controller perfectly. It feels like you're somewhat attached to the game. And although I don't like motion controls, it gets it right, and it's mostly brief, so I'll give them a pass on that. Now, um, the unlockables. The, you got a lot of unlockables in this game. It's pretty good. You could, uh, you know, collect puzzle pieces, which will lead you to open up shops. I opened up three. One it would be like for your con spaceship controller. You could change the color. Yeah, um, Astrobot, he, uh, rides around on a dual sense controller. You could also open up a shop where he uh, could change clothes to look like different uh, PlayStation characters. You could, and um, there's one more that I unlocked. I mean, which is a zoo. I'm pretty sure there's something else, but it requires multiple pieces of the puzzles. You could also use the money that you gain to uh, help your, you know, robot friends get things. I mean, get a few things, you know, around the area. Well, area where you crash landed. That's where, you know, they're having everything yep it's a uh, pretty up there even also realms on the like crash landing planet you're at so where you can look into them and check out more stuff on discover new the secrets it really 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 does a good job in rewarding the player making them want to find the bots want to i mean even though you know i want to find them because they're cool and they're adorable and you know astrobot he's a cool character but yeah it makes you really want to get out there and do that. So yeah, the gameplay, like I said, it's really on point. I mean, and they didn't miss with that. The graphics look very, very, very nice. Uh, a lot of graphical detail went into it. You know, no, looks a little cart. It's supposed to look cartoonish, but you know, even like the lights reflecting off the bots, the shadows, everything looks good. In in the animations is are the best they're top tier rather if it be you know i mean astrobot just uh you know doing his little idle animations waving at the camera when you look at him or you know writing the you know triangle square x and circles playstation signs in the ground playing on his playstation one calling for everybody or even you know interacting with the npcs throughout the world it really looks nice and the cutscenes look like you know uh like a like an animated like movie honestly to be honest i mean of course it's not realistic graphics but they really got it down on point they really 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 did the music and the sound design is very good is very very top tier too they uh guess also knew what they were doing okay the sound design isn't you know okay perfect but yeah like you it, you feel it's in line with the controller. You even have 
to sound effects coming out of the controller too. The music is very nice, especially on the tree level. Like, um, it will have you bopping along. They uh, really, really put their heart, soul, and dedication. Rather, you know, you know the gameplay, the little characters, even if they don't speak, all of that. This is what you call a fucking game. As for like polish optimization, the game works really well. I mean, I haven't really seen it dip in frames that much, you know. Runs perfectly. The uh, resolution is very crisp and, um, you know, doesn't stutter. And as for bugs and glitches, uh, no, I, I haven't encountered any. Pro I mean, not to say it ain't bug free, but they uh, really did their thing when it when they came to putting it together like I said I've said that over and over but I'm telling you it's good now moving on to the verdict Astrobot is one of those games that like I said the little things sometimes make up for a lot it's fun to play you know the character main character he's cool he's adorable it's just straight to the point solid gameplay great platforming you know Great graphics, great music, great level to so it does almost everything good, you know. And this is why I'm rating it a nine out of ten. Yeah, would have ten did, but you know, that water level, it was perfect up until the water level that was one, and you know, that freaking level with the motion controls, yeah. You know, they could have done better with that level or whatever, but like I said, it's uh, fun. And uh, do I recommend it? Yes. Is it worth $60? Hell yes. Should you pick it up? Like, what you think? Of course. But anyway, if you disagree, write down. Or if you agree, you know, just in the comments. But, you know, write in the comments. But anyway, it's getting late. So this has been Eastside Rage signing out. Keep raging out. I'll catch you on the next stream.